morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you wherever you are in the world. I hope you're all staying at a lot, staying safe and staying well. And I'm trusting and hoping that this video meets you well, which I am equally excited to create or to make today. Anyways, as usual, my name is Oluwa Kamiyo Sege and I welcome you back to my YouTube channel. Uh, today, which is the 17th of November 2020. Before I move on to the video, I'd just like to appreciate you all for being here. Thank you for your likes, thank you for your comments. Thank you for watching my video and please do share them. And do not forget to press that notification bell that allows you whenever I upload a new video, which I'm hoping and trusting, fingers crossed, that you'll be weekly. Anyways, today I am going to be making another cake recipe, which is, uh, it is called the uh, salted caramel cake recipe or flavor. And funny enough, this recipe, uh, this is my baking experience or adventure for the past, in the past three years. I've only had one client request it. A younger sister, to, to just put it lightly, she's the only one that I've requested it since I've been baking. So it's not one of those um, flavors that um, I popularly requested from me. And this lady, whenever she, she wants to make a cake, that's the flavor she wants to have. And she keeps coming back for more. In fact, she was even the one that made me make it the first time ever. And anytime she requests a cake, that's the exact flavor or lemon flavor that she requests. Anyway, we're making salted caramel. There's a lot of recipes out there. I'm not claiming to be an expert on this one, however, I'm going to show you how I make my which, a recipe which I saw on the internet and I kind of tweaked to my own um, style. And I'm going to now show you my ingredients which I've got behind me. I've got my ingredients laid out here, and um, in here I've got. Um, 600 grams of plain flour. I've got nine large eggs in here. I've got uh, 500 ml of buttermilk. Here I've got 230 grams of uh, brown sugar. I've got 230 grams of castor sugar, that is granulated sugar or baking sugar. And here I have got 500 grams of soft butter that is room temperature butter i am going to be using vanilla extract or vanilla flavoring i'll be using um four teaspoonful of that i have here three teaspoonful of baking powder i have here one teaspoon of salt and i have here one teaspoon of baking soda that is bicarbonate of soda okay now so let's start the mixing and the baking process before I commence the process just to let you know that I have already um, preheated my oven to gas mat 2 that's an equivalent of um, 450 degrees centigrade I have now decided to even lower my temperature again I'm doing an experiment today so I'm hoping it's going to turn around. Also, I have lined my team and I, I'm going to be making a cake which is one of the cakes I have for this week. So it's not a small cake or it's a small cake but uh, in a bit of a larger quantity. So the quantity here, the, which I'm going to mention to you, it's for a week, one of the cakes I'm decorating this week for a client. So if you want a smaller version of it, you can always divide it either by two or by three. Anyway, to commence the process, I am using plain flour today. I'm not using self-raising flour, and that is why I have, got, I have got baking powder. So I'm going to pour in my three teaspoonful of baking powder, my one teaspoonful of bicarbonate of soda, and my one teaspoon of salt. I'm going to now whisk them together. I am using plain, just mention again, I am using plain flour today, and that's why I have 
baking powder added to my recipe and so if I was using bread self raising I wouldn't need to add I wouldn't need to add the baking powder so I am now sifting my flour I love to sift my flour for about three, uh, uh, three times this is to improve the texture of my cake so I do that so that it incorporates air into the flour which in turn improves the texture of my cake or the overall outcome of my cake also in case there are you just won't get rid of any external particles in your flour for instance if something accidentally drops in it by sifting it you'll be able to get rid of it or you'll be able to get rid of any hard bump maybe uh, in your flour I don't have that problem because my flour my is always at the best position, always done at high. However, I love to see it to incorporate more air in my batter, which in turn improves the quality or overall texture of my cake. Second time. By the way, the music playing in the, in, in the background is my husband's um, new album titled All Knowing God. The track that's currently playing now is called is titled Egali the Way which means I will follow Jesus. Literally. I'm not sure I got that right, but that's what that's the old gist of that track. So my flour is prepared. I'm not going to set that aside. I'm moving to my eggs. I do not use my eggs all. I, I separate my egg yolks from my egg whites for most of my sponge cake recipes and add them at different stages of the process. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm separating uh, my eggs. And by the way, my eggs is at room temperature. It is important that your ingredients when you're baking are at room temperature. This again helps to improve the texture, the overall texture of your cake. Another thing I love to do with my egg whites is removing the white clumps. I'm not sure what I'm calling it right. I don't know that it's called red clumps, but there's you know there's some white and uh, thick stuff in the well, in the egg whites. I think they're called the embryo. I may be incorrect, but if you know what they're called, please drop your comment in the comment section. I love to remove them. I don't like leaving them in my um, in court. Anything that I'm using extra. I remove anything removable. So that's what I'm going to do now. Because I take great care in the baking and decorating of my head. So anything I don't like to see or eat in any food, I take them out. Never leaving my leaving my egg whites clear. Well, my husband is Asian. I am Yoruba. He didn't teach me his language, so. Anyway, that's my eggs and my flour prepared. Now, I'm gonna set aside those. And then we begin mixing. So we now begin with the creaming and the mixing of the sugar and the butter. Now, my butter goes in. You can see the state of my butter at the moment is yellow. That's my 500 grams of butter going in, my 230 grams of brown sugar. Okay. 
and my 200 grams of granulated or caster sugar again in so we're going to I'm going to spring that until it is soft and fluffy a dix could take up to 10 minutes and in the, in, in the interim I would, I would have added my uh, vanilla extract and my eggs so by the end of the whole process my my mixture my batter would be fluffy and creamy so mixing and don't forget in the middle of your mixing to scrape down your bowl it is important to do that so that all aspects of your mixture can be properly mixed with air properly incorporated into that at this stage your mixing speed is at a, at a speed between medium and high depending on the car this is the evil uh, the evil track on the album called Yanni Kili. I'm scraping down my bowl now to ensure that all aspects of my butter is captured. You can see the brown sugar makes it brown. And then mix again. And then my butter now is not been mixing for about five minutes. I'm going to scrape down my bowl again. My mixture is fluffy at the moment. So it's soft and fluffy, although it's not white. That's understandable because it's brown sugar, but it's soft and fluffy. I will now be adding my four teaspoonful of vanilla extract. And now continue with the whisper. Whisk until the vanilla extract is properly incorporated with the rest of the batter. And now I'll be adding my egg yolks, one yolk at a time, until the, uh, the egg yolks are properly incorporated with the rest of the uh, batter. At this stage, my mixture has been mixing for upwards of 10 minutes in total now and it's ready. You can see it's very soft and fluffy. The egg is added. So, I am now going to add my buttermilk and my, and my mixture of plain flour, baking soda, that's my carbonate of soda, my baking powder and my salt. I will be adding them in alternate measures. That's in Add the flour first and then add the, uh, some of the buttermilk and then in the order until all of the in ingredients are exhausted. So in alternate um, format. At this stage your mixing speed is reduced because you don't want to over mix your batter. Once, I mean, so yes, your butter with your flour not included. Once your flour in, is included, your mixing process changes. So you have to mix slowly. And also to prevent a splatter all over the place. I do have a guard, but I'm the sort of person that if I'm not comfortable using something like that, I do have a guard in all of my mixes, but I don't use them. They're dead. But in order to avoid splatters, I just reduce the speed. Second portion of my 
again mix and properly incorporate. Add the remainder of my milk. And then add the remainder of my flour. I'm just going to whisk now or beat now onto the flour and the milk are uh, all properly incorporated incorporated with the rest of the batter. My butter is ready and so is my egg whites. Now we move to the next and final stage of the process. So this is the third and final stage of the process which is the folding in of my egg whites. My soft and my meat thick egg whites. I'm folding it in like so. Fold. Until all is properly incorporated into the rest of the batter. You can see my batter is caramel brown color. This is a light butter. This can um, bake an 8 inch round cake. You can bake a 10 inch round cake as well, but it depends on how tall. Want your, you want your cake to be, but I always really love my cake to be tall. There'll be enough for me to do one of the cakes I have this week as tall as I want it to be. I'm now going to pour into my lined tea. I don't measure anymore. At the start of my baking adventure, I used to measure the butter into each tea, but I don't do that anymore. My cake have finished baking. I've just brought it out of the oven and I'm going to let it cool for about 10 minutes before I place it on the racks. You can see it's bouncing back as I'm touching. That means it's really baked. I've inserted the skewer in it and it's come out plain. You can see it's beginning to move away from the um, tin that I means it's um, baked as well. Those are the things, the signs you know when your cakes are baked. Don't you just love my finished cake? That's my salted caramel cakes. It's currently cooling with the others, waiting to be cooked. I've got four of them, which I'm going to be the and chain. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being with me tonight. And please do not forget to leave your thumbs up. Do not forget to leave your comments. If you think there's something that I've done that I could have done differently, please do leave your thoughts in the comment section. And of course, why don't you try the recipe? Let me know how your thoughts are. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. And then, um, if you think there's something I've done great again, please do leave your comments in the comment section. Thank you so much for being with me, and God bless you. Please do not forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. This will love you. And if at any time I upload a new video, 
leads to continue to stay safe with yourself and your family. Have a blessed remainder of the week ahead. Bye for now and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Take care, God bless you and bye for now. Bye.